Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are starting off today in the VAB, building our next shuttle payload for our um, low Earth orbit, uh, hopefully deep space travel vessel. And uh, we have this new greenhouse part, despite my absolute stubborn refusal to include new parts. This one was kind of necessary. This is a uh, moon seeker greenhouse for attack life support. Um, we pulled the backdated version for 1.1.3, which is what we're running in KSP and updated the configs a little bit to make it uh, more compatible with realism overall. It also introduces the new resource of fertilizer, which we will need to grow plants that will help feed our Kerbals as well as providing some CO2 scrubbing and oxygen production. Um, our intended crew of three should be well served by uh, one of these per Kerbal. We're going to go ahead and go up to four just really because it kind of looks better. And, um, <laughs> well, I mean, really, we want to test the part in low Earth orbit when we can get our crew home should something not exactly work out for us. But it would be... Uh, beneficial for these parts to work the way we want them to. And because this is going to be a uh, at the top of the habitation module, and we don't really have a lot of other requirements on this vessel, we're just going to go ahead and integrate uh, command and control into the front of this and hopefully obstruct those doors as much as possible, because I don't want a Kerbal jumping out of there. I don't think those parts are actually crewable. As you can see, they're all filled with lush greenery, and it kind of looks like a TIE fighter. So, goofiness aside, uh, we do want to include a bunch of control cores on this because the vessel is going to be uh, eventually quite massive. And as we shed weight, we want to be able to shed those uh, battery-destroying control cores. They do give us avionics for about 150 tons apiece, uh, plus what we get from the command module and every all the other cores that will be eventually uh, uh, included also. And... Uh, well, the other requirement is that we be able to squeeze it inside the shuttle bay uh, of an SKS shuttle, which really kind of made the design decisions here uh, more than anything else really did. Now, we're building out the tug since we need this to dock to the, f you know, the top of it. Uh, we're going to have to dock with the face of it, which is we're using octagonal strut for that. And we will be reinforcing with traditional struts. Uh, in just a little bit, but we're going to save this as a sub-assembly now that we've got its tug carrier doohickey all figured out. We will load up our SKS uh, Heavy Empty and put it in the cargo bay. We are way, way, way under our rated tonnage uh, for this vessel, so what we're going to do is include some containers of life support supplies and uh, everything we need to really kind of test these greenhouses out and uh, we'll see if they're going to work see if they're going to work in time warp which is kind of the real test bed for uh, anything TAC life support derived um, it does some funny things when uh, you ignore a vessel for a long time then come back to it it kind of rushes through its uh, calculations and then just starts draining things to make up for the difference if uh, any of you have ever uh, come back to a vessel that you've ignored for a couple of months and put a Kerbal on EVA, it's an instant death sentence because it starts subtracting resources from their internal resource inventory as if they were outside uh, that entire time you ignored them. Uh, so that's going to be the big test for these greenhouse parts to see if we can ignore this vessel for months, possibly years on end without it screwing stuff up. So we've got our two tanks of life support supplies. We're going to include this adapter piece to move them lower in the cargo bay so that we can keep a uh, good flight balance uh, during our ascent stage. And we're also going to include some struts. We'll get that, um, being built. It'll be ready in a hundred some odd days. So we've got some time to kill. And the good news is, is our next flight of cargo things have arrived at Mars. So it's time to do some of the very treacherous uh, aero capture and braking maneuvers to get these uh, settled into a nice low Martian orbit. We're going to make sure that we do not have ignore max temperature on because it, uh, is almost a necessity with the heat glitch plug here in 113. If you're ever going to jump to a vessel, you have to turn on ignore max temperature. Otherwise, there's, I don't know, like a 1 in 20 chance. It's just going to everything is going to overheat and explode. So uh, in the interest of being somewhat 
realistic with this joke of a space program. We're going to make sure that all the cheats are turned off before we attempt this uh, incredibly brazen arrow capture maneuver uh, for which our angle is bad, our speed is way too high, and our tonnage is excessive. Uh, this vessel, I think once we jettison the delta upper stage, will be coming in at uh, more than 115 tons. Uh, give or take. And this is the supply rover for our hopeful surface base installation. Um, we really, really, really need this flight to be successful. So if we can have any hope of being able to put a crew down on the surface of Mars uh, sometime this year, we not only need this capture to be successful, but the next one, which is the descent stage for our semi-reusable Mars lander, uh, the Phoenix is the ascent stage, and Ash, uh, ascent or ascent stage shield heat, uh, will be arriving this window also. This, of course, the supply rover, and so we've got our nodes set up so we know about how much DV we need to scrub off in the atmosphere to perform a capture. We've got about 1,600 meters per second left in that delta upper stage. Some of that is going to boil off while we are descending towards Mars, but um, hopefully we will still be able to uh, break, burn enough, and shed enough speed through the atmosphere uh, to put us into an orbit. If we can get captured with about 1,600 meters per second left in our primary descent stage, we should have enough to pull off a landing. Um, even if we have to turn and burn, we've got some excess there in the DV figures. You see right now we have about two kilometers per second in that uh, initial descent uh, aeroshell stage, and then uh, a bunch of dedicated landing fuel on the terminal descent stage uh, contained within that has the, the actual rover on it. Um, I'm really hoping that uh, we can get this one here successfully this time. We've had a, a couple of failures prior, and we're trying to balance out our fuel load because once we shed this uh, delta upper stage, it's, uh, it's going to be a balancing act. We're really going to have to rely pretty heavily on those thrusters to maintain orientation through the atmosphere. And if the fuel load is not balanced, then, well, uh, things might get just a, a little bit interesting. So we are also trying to drain the uh, thruster fuel from the Delta upper stage because we need every liter of that we can manage to keep together uh, without scrubbing off too much of it excessively. So we're about a minute 40 left in this burn where we can still try to get our speed below 10 kilometers per second here at Mars, which is, um, man, that's so, it's really, really fast. Um, we're going about twice the speed that Perseverance was doing when uh, it hit Mars Atmo, and, you know, we're at about 120 tons, give or take. Maybe it's a little more, maybe it's a little less. I don't remember exactly. And it depends a lot on how much liquid oxygen we've boiled off from our initial descent stage and how much thruster fuel we've put out the ports. But we're hoping very soon we'll complete the burn on that uh, Hydrolox engine and be able to jettison it. But for the rest of this maneuver, I am going to turn you over to Old Me live during the broadcast. Okay. Uh, throttling back. That's... A couple. Pull yourself away, friend. And hold retrograde. Hope for oh god, we're already in the atmosphere. This thing is gonna smack into us. We need to get the hell out of the way. Come on. Lateral translation. Do it, do it, do it. Why aren't any of these ports firing? Oh god. Oh god. Come on. Come on, before you start seeing real drag, get the hell out of the way. 20 meter inflated. Yeah. Oh, poo. Clunk. Scrape. Get the hell out of the way. <laughs> Blade of struts ablating. This is going well. 
mistakes have been made. <laughs> many of them. Many, many, many. What's the mask? Good, good, good question. I don't have the mental capacity to bring up Mechchev. Vessel info. Current mass 126 tons. I wonder if hitting the brakes is going to do us any good at all. Uh, heating effects at 60 kilometers, which means, wow, we're cooking. How much a blader we got on this thing? Not much. Extremely stressful start to the EDL. <laughs> we'll say we're not, we're not trying to land. We are just trying to capture <laughs> and hoping for God for the best. A little, just a little chunkier. <laughs> Forty kilometers actual forty six ASL. Blader is ablating. Fuel is a depleting. Eight kilometers per second across the ground. Well eight point three. Grab your grab your drinks, everyone. Thirty-four actual. We just touched the Olympus Mons biome, but I think we're in the clear. As far as piling into mountains is concerned. Ah, we've actually burned off more ablator on this one than I think ever before. Wow, look at that G loading. I'm like six and a half. That Mars entry. <laughs> just hold retro, friend. You can do it. Still descending. And there's Apex. We're on our way back up. So heat probably not going to be an issue. Whether or not we will capture, however. <laughs> that is the big one. We're just going to have to hold the thrusters open for a thousand years. Come on, sweetie. You can do it. Let's just start holding the brakes now. Come on, sweetie. Come on. 34 kilometers actual. At least it's going to be a good long trip through the atmosphere. Alright, this is actually... We don't want to hit this floor. This node is way misset. You can see this is set for landing. We don't want to do a landing. We want to capture into orbit. I'll say we won't need a blader for the actual landing. We're going to, if we capture, we're going to boost into a much higher orbit and do many, many arrow breaking passes to lower our orbit down to about uh, 250 by 150 and then do landing from there, which testing has shown we don't need a heat shield. Oh, God. 40 kilometers actual and we are not captured. This is the point where I had hoped we would be captured by now. At least we're not going to overtax the heat shield. <laughs> but we are getting significant bendy on our trajectory. We'll just keep holding the brakes. Not going to do us much good. Well, we're at reality, they wouldn't do us much good. But we're at reality, people who are good at math would be doing the uh, capture profile. <laughs> Oh, God, do we really have to bleed, like, another 1.4 kilometers per second to get this into orbit? Uh, we might end up lighting our main engine. Just saying. So maybe we'll preserve the thruster fuel and wait till we're out about 80 kilometers and then get things situated. Take this out and let's roll just to make our axes even. This is what I should have done. Nope. Other way. 
is created some downforce by angling our heat shield in. But I think we're too high in the atmosphere now for it to make a difference. Yep. In fact, we are. So next stage activates that engine. We could just jettison. And then activate that stage. Yeah, where's our heat shield deployment stage? I don't see it on here. So we're just going to do this manually because that engine doesn't have a gimbal anyway. So jettison. Activate. Boom. Boom. Do work. Balance from our thruster fuel tanks being uneven is starting to woefully demonstrate itself. As long as we can do this and still have 1600 meters per second in the tanks, we should be okay. Oh, come on, man. Uh, why don't I just tell you to hold retrograde? thrusters do things yes look at this bendy 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 come on come on 200 meters per second left in margin and come on come on come on Boom, captured, done, 1698, yes! Ah, because we get to lower our orbit entirely for free. <sighs> 16 day, what, why? No, yeah, that's right, kill, kill. And with the payload successfully delivered into orbit, we'll set that node to uh, remind us to boost our periapsis so that we don't come screaming back into the surface. And then spend a good bit of time doing some fuel balancing because um, otherwise things would get interesting. Basically, we got to pick which thruster packs are going to be empty. They're all linked with uh, fuel pipes internally, so even if one's empty, all thrusters will remain firing as long as there is some fuel in the system. Uh, it's the same for our four uh, top-mounted thrusters as well, but I mean, they don't interact with the lower thrusters. It's just fuel shared between them so we're going to try to get this load balanced and uh get it set up for hopefully a very successful series of aero braking passes which i will probably do on my own time and maybe we'll get some footage of that i don't know it's quite boring to be very honest with you and uh, get this into its step established orbit and then uh wait for a prime opportunity to continue with our landing run, which is where the real stress happens, despite any indication of this being the stressful part. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.